Hey, what to do, real? It's your boy Kane, man. Over here live in the summer hill. Finna get ready to start on my documentary, you know what I mean? Take y'all over to the hood, over to the east and down where I'm from. Show y'all all the ins and outs, you know what I'm saying? The what's the what not. Show y'all all the spots, man. Turn y'all on to all the homeboys in the hood, that front of the hood, man. Just let y'all know everything from the history of East Atlanta, from the bottom to the top. Y'all hear a lot of rappers talk about East Atlanta, but they don't really just give y'all the full, all the details on everything about East Atlanta from how everything started, you know, who from where, who did, where, who do, where, where, where the trap spots at, who trap. You know, all our folk that we done lost, man, that done died and, you know, passed on or whatever. So, yeah, that's what I'm about to do right now, man. We live in summer here right now. I'm with my little partner spot. These folks been on here forever, man, you know what I mean? For some reason, I don't know what it is about Summer Hill. They won't lead that thing, you know what I mean? But yeah, so get ready, because we finna make it happen. Make it do what it do. All right? All right. What's up, real? This your boy, Kane. Before we go to the hood, I ain't gonna, I'm gonna just start off from right here. Just keep them going back. This is where a lot of stuff started there right here. In the neighborhood, we down the street from Tommyville. Four season. Right across from the prison. Or the Chevron gas station. This is one of the uh, old little truck spots that we had back in the days. One of the spots that when Gucci first came home and uh, Mojo. And everybody had first started rapping, doing shows and everything. We had a spot down the street right here. This is what the gas that we come to just to get in there and fill up, just do everything we need to do. So, I got a couple homeboys over there in the prison, man. My homeboy Poutine, my partner Corn, you know, holding it down, doing their little time. So, I'm gonna take y'all on down to the old truck, like let y'all check the thing out right quick. Alright. Alright, so now I'm gonna walk y'all over to the spot, to the old, the old truck spot. You know what I'm saying? Wild homeboy from the hood used to post up there. You know what I'm saying? Mojo cash that by blood. You know what I mean? D drill, everybody from East Atlanta, man, who used to come over here and just post up and just work, grind, you know what I'm saying? Get that check, you know what I'm talking about? Come on. Show y'all to the old spot. This just one of the old spots, man, from back in the days, you know what I'm saying? one of the old spots right here. You know, that we used to work out back in the day. Check that thing out, come to the backyard right like there. Playing straight band though, you know what I mean? This thing used to have so much traffic, so many cars in and out, the whole backyard used to be full. Used to have to move cars around and move cars in and out just to get in and out, you know what I mean? Come through the back door, you know what I'm saying? Depending on who um who was in our serving, you know, who, who, who served you or whatever. Sometimes you might see bro, sometimes you might see blood, you know what I mean? You never know who you might see when you pull up in that thing. But yeah, this is one of the old spots. Um, that's a couple more to go. I'm gonna take y'all to Ed old spot. Let y'all see Ed old spot before Ed got killed, man. You know what I mean? Then it's on like four more spots in the hood. I'm gonna take y'all to. Then we leave those spots. I'm gonna take y'all to Sanders. You know what I mean? From back in the 90s, you know, 
stuff that you don't hear people talking about now. People who say they from East Atlanta, but they don't talk about it. So I'm gonna show y'all all that, you know what I mean? All right, let's do it. Now we in the hood, we in East Atlanta. So y'all my little spot where I like to eat it right here. You know what I mean? So a good soul food. This cold right here. I've been over here waiting for they put all them all that right there. All that right there was just bushes at first, you know what I'm saying? They knocked the bushes down, put all that right there. But at first they had the croakers down there by the CVS, where the CVS cows at, all that used to be all croakers. Now this croakers right here. They were way back in the early 90s, you know what I'm saying? This is part of the history of the East Atlanta. You know what I'm saying? That y'all don't know about. But so we finna leave here. Let's take y'all a little bit in old spot. Go by the rocky road. You know. Let's ride. Yeah, what's happening? This your boy Kane. Just showing y'all my little spots in the hood where I do everything. Get this why I get my hair cut at. That's why I eat it when I'm waiting on my, my time in line to get my hair cut. Down that way I get my nails and my toes done, that, you know what I mean? So I got everything in one walk. You know what I'm talking about? Pay my telephone bill over there at T-Mobile. If I want to go and get some food or something like that, I can go right on over there in Kroger and just give me something to eat, you know what I mean? Yeah, the real real player, man. That's why I get all this good looking for, you know what I'm talking about? Everything done in the hood, you know what I'm talking about? Anyway, y'all. You ain't never seen no real player, player, player nigga, man. You looking at where I'm right now. From the head to toe, you know what I'm saying? This is, this is it. This is where I do all my business at. I do everything in the hood. You know what I'm saying? Give me all a little close up right quick. Let him see. Let him see this face jaw, you know what I'm talking about? See how clean that thing is. You know what I mean? See them things up there spinning like that, huh? Yeah, all that, you feel me? Everything. You know what I'm talking about? All right. Right now, we um, we still in East Atlanta. We on the Rocket Road, as you can see. On Lindale and Moreland Avenue. Right here. This is the cut behind Ed old house. And the cut behind all the houses was on Moreland, on the front street that don't have a, a driveway. So they gotta come back here to get up in their yard and park. But back there in that cut, that's a whole lot of stuff used to happen back there, you know what I mean? This where a lot of pimping, a lot of horn, you know what I mean? A lot of that went down in this cut right here. All this was going on for my boy Ed got killed, you know what I'm talking about? And this is the lad house that Ed was working out of before he got killed right here. Come check out the house. Right now, you know all these other folk, they done moved in East Atlanta, man. They done kind of like East Atlanta over a little bit, but this is the house right here with Ed had before he got killed. We always have had this wood fence right here, so everything that went on behind the fence, you never did know unless you was affiliated with what was going on back there. You know what I'm saying? They weren't really nothing but just a, a real truck spot. You know what I'm talking about? Other than the pimping and the horn, that's what was going on. You know? This is how it look now. It didn't look like this when Ed had it, but this is how it look now. Whoever got it right now, this is how they got it looking, but yeah. 
when Ed had it, it didn't look like this. And then across the street. You see that porch light on there right there? We're gonna check that spot tomorrow. That's for the old spot next to the last spot where Mojo had for the for the house got hit right there. Uh, I think that might have been last year or whatever. So we're gonna go on and shut this thing on down. Then um We'll start back tomorrow, so I get this fit for tonight. We'll be back tomorrow with the rest of it. What's happening? What's happening, man? This is your boy Kane checking in. Finna get ready to start this day two of the documentary. Right now, we out here in Clean County, out here on Riverdale Road. You know what I'm saying? One of the chill spots out here, whatever. I be kicking it, posted up at whatever. Hollywood's apartment, you know what I'm saying? We finna um, get ready to head down to the city, man, back to the A-Town. Take you back to the East Atlanta, you know what I'm saying? Get finna with part two of the documentary. You know, we got started on that thing yesterday, so it's gonna be another long, hot day. It's hot down here in Atlanta, man, for real. It's hot, you know? So get ready. That's right. Where to do, where to do this, Black King? Live in East Atlanta, over here at Grant Central. One of the spots that we've always been eating at since we were growing up, coming up. You know what I'm saying? Glenwood Avenue. It's one of the best pizza spots in the hood that you can go to and get pizza and get full and eat good. You know what I mean? They built this spot right here. We were around about 10, 11 years old. They put this in the hood. We just been coming here ever since then. <laughs> Come on up. This is all the homeboys in the hood come to. They're ready to You want to see good. a photo shoot? Get pulled. I do. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. This is why our homeboy I've been coming to here since we were little, man. Since we were about 9, 10, 11 years old. Coming up here eating good. Then my boy Gary. Gary been cutting hair right now since we were about the same age. That man been working over there about 20, 25 years. My homeboy Nick used to cut hair over there. Quick, you know what I'm saying? Y'all look that ball quick. Come get in front of the shot of the arm. Come get That's it. Great picture, man. Some of the best pieces you can get. It's better than that New York pizza, you know what I'm saying? That them folk got down there in New York. We got it in Atlanta. Grand Central. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, a lot of this stuff around here new. They done put a lot of this stuff up here, man. It wasn't up here at first, but it's up there now. We got Easter down to come down the street. Some old history right we got Easter down. They done put old print shop right here, Easter down print shop, where you get your, your copies made for your paper, business cards, little stuff like that. You know? Alright, trying to go get me something to eat right quick. I'll chop it up with y'all in a little bit. Alright. This is the old blippers, man. We've been had blippers in the hood. I don't know how long, man, and they done see what they doing to it. They mess the blippers up, turn it into a seafood spot. You know what I mean? Everybody don't even eat these food, but look what they doing. You know what I'm talking about? Then, come on down anyway, man. We got the big H. The store where everybody always go to the play their numbers, you know, buy this, that little nick man.
pain bring like that forever, man. You know what I mean? Peeping the horn, you know what I mean? Everywhere we go, there what you gonna hear. Trapping, pimping the horn. Yo, my boy Herman stay right there, man. He be living right there, man. I don't know, probably about 40, 50 years now. He ain't never going nowhere. You know what I'm saying? But that's it for right here. We're gonna go down the road a little bit, take y'all on down to the old spot down the street. Show y'all what that thing look like, you know what I mean? Alright. Moreland Avenue. Right here, this where my homegirl uh niece is stay at. Everybody doing niece, man. She uh she affiliated with all the homeboy, man. She don't, you know. She been around forever, man. This house right here. right here man it was, uh, it was crazy times in this house right here all the homeboys you know same old click you know same old same old same old nothing new nothing different See what this said right here? This one of the first spots back in 1992. No, I say about 1994. Way before Ryan got killed in the early 90s. This is one of the first houses right here. One of the first real trap houses in, in East Atlanta right here. You know what I'm saying? I ain't talking about no 2000. No 2002, no 2003, or tonight, way back in the 90s. 92, 93, 94, right here. Run. Way before Run got killed. This is where we used to be at. This is where before he got the house up there on top of the hill up there. You know what I'm saying? Um, Come around to the front right there. This way everybody used to walk from the south side when they used to go to the south side and come to East Atlanta. All the folks used to walk from East Atlanta to the south side, come back down here and go to wherever they stayed at when the partner was up, you know what I'm saying? This is right here. One of the first trap houses, one of the, the real trap houses. First real truck house in East Atlanta. You know what I'm saying? Say what? You can take a picture against that background. That car right there? All right, give me a second.
This right here, my homeboy Carlos, Cornelius, all them. This is where they stayed back in the day, way back in the 90s. You know what I'm saying? We used to use that shortcut right there. We go to fishing frame, we used to do all kind of dirt, and run from the police, stealing and all that crazy man we used to do. You know what I'm saying? We used to use this for a little cut to get up through there. You know what I'm talking about? But yeah, everything different around here now. This back when it was Payless shoe store right there. Yeah, matter of fact, let me take y'all on down here. Matter of fact. Hey, how you doing? Get a picture of that old Buffalo China right there, you know what I'm saying? Way back in the early 90s. Then it went from pick and pay to a Metro PCS to a check cashing place to a whatever it is now, which is nothing. That right there was a uh, Payless. Payless shoe store back in the 90s. You know what I'm saying? Now it's a moments, you know. So we're gonna shut this spot down right here and we're gonna go to the top of Sanders. And we're gonna take Sanders all the way down and just wrap that thing all around. Alright? Antique, yeah. Check it out. I see. Car. What's happening, bro? How you doing, bro? I'm working on a little documentary, man. Doing a little, a little documentary for the hood, man. You know what I'm okay. saying? Okay. Yeah. Did my hood, man. From way back in the day, bro. What's your name? Kane. Okay. You remember this house? Yeah, I remember everything around here, bro. You remember Eric? Eric who? Smell. You. Did you ever play with anybody over here in the yard? Cause we've been here since I was 16. I'm 57. I probably remember Eric Smith. You remember Ben? Yeah. Okay, well, if you knew them, you know the crew. Yeah. You remember Ron stayed over there? Come on, folks. Yeah. You remember you know Ron? Let's all get old shot old dad though, man. You know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. Dad, them dad, them remember Ron. They know Ron was a good dude before no, he got killed, man. You know what I mean? Ain't no even not outside. Yeah, Ron been dead for a minute now. Ron been dead since like, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm Ron been dead since like 98, 98. Okay, okay, he was right there in that house. He went from that house to that, that house. That, that, that yellow house. Yeah, then he went to uh, then he yeah. went to Old Grove. He got killed on Old Grove. You remember uh, Jason? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Jason killed him here. For real. Yeah. This one of the old old little throwback spots in East Atlanta, That's, man. There you, you know go. What now, I mean? now you really in the hood. Yeah, man. I've been out here, bro. Yeah. This ain't nothing new to me. That nigga got them goddamn whaling in here so deep, make a nigga sick. Y'all both gonna be in my goddamn Y'all both gonna be in my documentary, man. So they gonna. Okay, cool, man. Okay. Right, I'll right. see them boys, man. All right. All right, homie. All right, homie. This it. You see this right here? That was it. That was it right there. Ron had both of those houses. He had that house first. He had that house. I remember. All this would be down there. Me, Tickle Boots, Juan, Terry, that boy Zandrick. The whole East Atlanta clique, the whole EAP, you name it, they were there. You know what I'm saying? Everybody from the top of East Atlanta. Right there. Right there. You know what I mean? No walk. See it right here? This whole street. Number trap. Whole street's a trap. From the bottom of Sanders, all the way to the top of Sanders. Shout out to that boy Tisa. You know what I'm saying? That boy can't trade you on find the canyon home. My nigga David from out here, man. That boy, man, you know what I mean? All these boys been East London ever since I was a little one, boy. Coming up down here. In that same old spot. That's it. You know what I'm saying? This whole street right here. 
We just run up and down their whole street doing whatever the hell we want to do. But they were stealing cars and selling dope back then. Whichever one we wanted to do, that's what we did. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, that was it. That was it. Now we're gonna go down here to uh, Tickaboo the Mower House. So yeah, our ticket boot don't stay there, man. My partner, man, he doing a little time in prison right now. My partner torn. They brought a monk him, came home now. You know what I'm saying? All my homeboy down the road, man. My partner Pete, man. Pete still out here holding it down there, boy. JJ. They go. This whole script right here. It was our script. Alright. Members came from out here, man, sitting in the yard at 2, 3, 4, 5 o'clock in the morning. Everybody out here posted up, man, just kicking it. That boy Lil D, that boy Terry Phillip, man, my nigga Lil Daryl before he died, man, you know what I'm saying? R.I.P. to my partner Daryl, man. You know, we, we did a whole lot right here. There was Tickaboo done stayed at. Tickaboo, Twan, Pete, Moon, JJ. They mama, they grandmama, you know what I'm saying? All of them stayed right here for a long time. But this whole street right here, man, we did a whole lot on this whole street right here. You know what I'm saying? And this street led to the apartments before they knocked the apartment down and redid them. And um, this was all back in the 90s, man, like 90, 94, 95. You know what I'm saying? Come on, let me show you the apartment right here. How you doing, Dad? You all right? Right now, this was the old apartment. They knocked the old apartment down and they built this right here. The new apartment, the new set of apartments. You know what I'm saying? But that's when uh, KLC was right there on the front of Marlin and they had a little street, a little side street. We used to come in here, man, and do our thing in apartments. A lot of big parties used to go down that back in the 90s, you know, the early 90s. You know. Everybody used to come here and trap, you know, sell dope, do it whatever it they want to do, have fun, hang out, stay in the apartment the whole night, you know what I'm saying, if that's what they wanted to do, you know. Get a, get a good look at the apartment now, man, you know. They didn't look like that back in the day, but that's how it looked now, so they done redid that thing. Back in the day, man, that thing was straight gutter, you know what I'm saying, straight hood, straight project, you know what I'm talking about. That's it. So that's another part of the history of East Atlanta, man, that I want to show y'all. We're going to keep the thing on moving, you know what I mean? All right. So, yeah. See the house right here? Where do you keep sitting at now? Yeah, these are the old spot. You know what I'm saying? Those little trucks back from here where everybody hung out at. Everybody kicked it. What's happening? What's happening? And this right here. There used to be Miss Winners. This is where we always ate at. It. It's a cookout now. We've been to cookout for a couple years. Or well, I think about a year or so, whatever, whatever. But there used to be Miss Winners, man. There was our favorite to come and sit down and chill spot, come eat, you know what I mean? Can you see that sigo over there? Get a picture of that sigo. That used to be Buddies. They used to be one of the biggest trap spots in East Atlanta. It might have been a gas station in the store, but to us, it was a trap. You know what I mean? So that's what we used it for. 
It's a great truck. PJs. That used to be PJs. I don't know if it's still PJs now, but the same thing. It may well the store, but to us, it was a trap. You know what I mean? So that's it for this little area right here. We're gonna set the thing on down. What to do? What to do? Everybody, this is Black Kane checking in. Day three of the documentary. It's all about the history of East Atlanta. You know what I mean? And everybody know what they right here used to be. This was the neighborhood spot for everybody from East Atlanta, everybody from Four Seasons, everybody from John Bud North, everybody from John Bell South, everybody from Gresham Road to Boulder Crest, to just everybody around, really the whole Atlanta area, really, because people from the west side used to come here, people from the south side, people from the north side used to come here, you know what I'm saying? This was the old game room, but you see what it is now. That's a Dollar Tree. The wing stand I would been right there, but this right here, this whole thing was the game room. And they had another part of the game room connected to the wing stand. But now my boy Grant, man, you know what I'm saying? We lost a good nigga, man. Grant, you know what I'm saying? He doing his little time in prison, whatever. He got caught up in a little situation and they sitting down the road, you know what I'm saying? Gave him a lot of time. But man, Grant was a good nigga, man. Everybody from everybody messed with Grant, you know what I'm talking about? Like, I don't care who you were, bro. You came to the hood, man. This way you came to. You came to the game room. Because either you were gonna shoot pool, or you were looking for some girls to catch for the night, or you were just posting up, kicking it, you know what I'm saying? Trapping. Or either you was just hanging out, you know what I mean? Just doing whatever it was you wanted to do, you know what I mean? But yeah, this game room, man, it, it, it meant the whole lot to East Atlanta, man. It meant the whole lot to Tommyville. It meant the whole lot to Four Seasons, man. Everybody down there in Lila Valley, man, you know. And constitutional, you know, just everybody, man. Everybody from the Moreland Avenue, everybody from the west side, everybody from the north side, everybody from the south side, like I say, everybody knew Grant. Grant was a real good dude, man, you know what I'm saying? He was a cool person, you know what I'm saying? He had a good heart. He just got caught up in the midst of a situation, and the situation got him sent down the road, you know what I mean? So he doing his little time, he holding it down, man, you know, staying prayed up and everything like that. And this just... Like I said, another part of the history of East Atlanta. It has been shut down since, um, I want to say like 2000 and, I want to say 2011, 2012, when they shut it down or whatever. But yeah, so we gonna move, keep it moving, going, going back up to the hood, man, and just show y'all what's going on with the rest of the hood, you know what I mean? All right. Yeah, you know how you got you got them young girls, man. She was a runaway, you know what I'm saying? And um, back then, that was back in like 06 or whatever. We was pimping. We were working at uh, the hotel on County Road. And that's when all that stuff had happened in New Orleans with Katrina and all that. And one of my little partner, man, he came out with a lot of my homeboys. I met them when they came down here. They had moved in the hotel right there on County Road, the Motel 6 or whatever. And um, that's what we were doing a lot of pimping at the hotel right there, and we were selling a lot of dope at the hotel too. And um, this girl, she had a body, man. She was she ended up being 14 years old, and she had ran away from home. But she had a body, man. Like she was like 19, 20 years old. You know what I'm saying? And the kind of the kind of female she was, her mind frame. You would never thought that she was 13 or 14, you know what I'm saying? Then the experience that she had as far as sex, you know what I'm saying? Giving head, having sex, you know. You would have never thought she was 13 or 14, you know what I mean? And um, my, my partner, he called her and he took her to New Orleans and he started working her down there in New Orleans and um, they got into a situation down there in New Orleans and so they had to come back down to Atlanta. And so when they came back to Atlanta, he stopped dealing with her, you know. Then my other partner, he got, he he, he turned himself on to her, however they linked up. I don't know how they linked up, man, you know what I'm saying? But they linked up and started doing their thing. And um, he went through a roadblock one night, man. Late at night, they was out working. He went through a roadblock one night. And them folk, 
start questioning her about her situation and what she was doing and all did that in the third man and yeah you know, that's when everything came out that she was a runaway you know her age her real age came out then by him getting caught up with her you know they put two and two together so the, the story had to come out you know and then when they hit him with the pimping you know what i'm saying and he ain't came he ain't been home ever since then you know and that was in 06 and it's 2016 now you know what i'm saying and you know they were giving they were they was giving 20 years for pimping you know what i'm saying i'll talk because they tried to give me 20 years you know what i'm saying before i caught that rape case or whatever for pimping so yeah my boy frank man he been riding ever since then i don't know i don't know exactly how much time they gave him but i know he doing some time because he ain't came home ever since then and i used to go over there on boulder Creek, man and check your apartment to see what was going on or whatever and them folks had ended up putting everything out, you know. People started taking this stuff, doing what they want to do, you know, whatever. And that was that, man, you know. So that's just another part of the history of East Atlanta, you know, that I want to catch up. So we're going to move on to the next beat, man. We're going to ride down by the nightlight, you know, show y'all the nightlight, you know what I'm saying? And take it from there. Then we're going on back up to the hood. Yeah, so we in the apartment, man, the old hood, you know, the old apartment, man, where everybody used to kick it at back in the day. They done changed the name of these things so many times, man. It used to be, uh, well, I think it's still left the main of five or whatever. But they done called it so many different names or whatever, man. But uh, all my homeboys stayed over here, man. So we just gonna drive around this thing, man. Let's let y'all check it out a little bit. Then while my homeboy, man, on... Um, Mojo had Mojo and Gucci them had a spot over here, man. Then my my folk eBay, a couple of the Crowders, man. They had a little spot over here. And Crowder, Eric Crowder. Um some other folk from East Atlanta man had spots out here. So this like it was another spot for East Atlanta to come chill at. Right here. And for me, I used it for a spot. To do my thing with the females at, man. You know what I mean? I ain't gonna tell no lie. I did a lot of dirt over here in the apartments. And it was always late at night. You know what I'm saying? But that's it, man. This is the hood. See how they got it looking right now? They working on it. They doing a lot of work on it. Or whatever. But this right here. That was eBay old spot right there. My home by Eric. And uh, right there. That was Gucci and Mojo old spot right there. And the playground right there. That's where everybody used to post up right there and do whatever they wanted to do. You know what I'm saying? Get drunk, smoke, get high. Whatever they, whatever it was they chose to do to make them happy, man. You know what I mean? It's still hood, though. You know what I'm saying? As you can see. What's happening? You see? That's it, man. They still got this gate right here in the back. You gotta go out this gate right here. It used to be broke at once upon a time. But yeah. That's it. See the apartment right here? There was another spot too, man. My homeboy had a little spot right there in the front where we used to go over there and post up and do some stuff over there too. And just kick it or whatever. And you see that and put this family dollar right here. This family dollar new. It went right there at first. Yeah, they still call it Man of Fire. Yeah. That shell always have been right there. So.
these houses right here. It was some older model houses right here. And it seemed like it took them folks a good two months, man, to knock them, them houses down there right there. And look what they put right there. You know what I'm saying? It ain't take them folks to waste no time to knock them old houses down and put them new houses right there. You see what I'm saying? In the spot we finna go to now was another one of Mojo and Gucci old spots. Like I said, I know where every spot was, man. You know what I'm saying? Like, I've been in the hood that long, bro. It ain't nothing about East Atlanta that I can't tell you or you can tell me about East Atlanta that I didn't already know. Because I knew everybody. And I know who was doing what. Look at what they done did to the house now. It didn't know what it looked like. Well, it did. Kind of like. It looked like that a little bit. But they... You can tell they did some work to it. You know what I'm saying? It look a little better, but it's still ugly. <laughs> Alright, man. We out of here. Now, on this street right here, this is where I seen my first dead body yet. Right here. Somebody had killed the dude, man, and left him in the car. And, um, me and my homeboy, hot. We was riding, we was going somewhere. And this street real dark at night, so you can't really see nothing or you can't really tell what's going on on this street because ain't no street lights on this street at nighttime. And so they killed the old boy, man. They left his body right here in the street. And um, we came down the street flying and we almost hit him or whatever. And just so luckily I seen him. And so we called the police. I went to the payphone and called the police, uh, the ambulance and the fire truck and let them know that it was a dead body down here in the middle of the road. And I gave them, you know, the description of the street, you know, all the information that they needed. And they didn't ever come. So the man was out here dead for about 30 to 45 minutes. And so we came back down here and double checked. The man was still down here dead. And so I called them folk back, man. I literally had to cuss them folks out. In order for them folk to come down here and see about that man, man, to get that man by out the street and everything, man. You know what I'm talking about? And that was crazy, man. But anyway, you see what that is right there across the street? Zest holes. We back on Moreland. That's our spot right there in the hood. You know what I'm saying? Been our spot for a long time. So we're gonna make our way back up to the top of East Atlanta. Then I hit y'all back when I get up there. All right. The house right here behind us. This the house, man, with these the niggas, man, that were hating on me so hard. I'm like, they were so jealous of me, man. I'm talking about niggas used to niggas used to deal with my kid, mama, you know what I'm saying? And um I was cool with this nigga too, you know what I'm saying? But a nigga was hating on me so hard, bro, man. That nigga, I'm talking about niggas started stealing from a kid, man. Niggas stole my car. Nigga, nigga stole, stole two AK from me. Um Nigga broke in my house about, I want to say about three times, man. You know what I'm saying? Three different times. Nigga was hating on me that hard, man. Watching me that hard. I'm talking about. And by him dealing with my kid, mama, it like, he knew everything. You know, like, every move I made, this nigga knew. You know what I'm saying? Because they were connected or whatever the situation was. You know what I'm saying? But long story short, man, like, everybody already knew. Everybody know that. I'm a gun man, you know what I'm saying? I always have dealt with guns. I always have had guns, you know what I'm saying? I always had handguns, AKs, whatever you want to call it, you know what I'm saying? I done had it, you know what I'm saying? So that's what I like. He was like the third or the fourth person that stole guns from me. You know what I'm saying? But he stole two AKs, um, stole a lot of stuff from my kids, man, and just was hating on me real hard, man. I just wanted to. Stop by that house, man, just to, you know, put it in the history, man, the documentary, you know what I'm saying? Like, I ain't I ain't mad or anything like that. It's just pouring out my haters, you know what I'm saying? There was one on nigga stayed in the house right here, man. A big hater, you know what I mean? But other than that, man, that's it. All right. This it. East Atlanta Supermarket. What's happening, bro? 
thing ain't going nowhere. Hey, man. This thing ain't been in the hood, man, since oh, man. I was a little boy. Patterson Avenue. Oh, man. What's happening, bro? You ought to make this the real hood, man. Give us a dollar, let her go get a beer and, and pop that motherfucker while you do it. For real? Yeah, man. Give us a dollar. We'll see what's going on. Right. Poop, what's up, Poop? Hey, what's up, man? Man, I'm working on a little documentary for the hood, man. I don't give a fuck. I like nah, I mean. This well, a lot of stuff went down there, man. This been right here forever, man. This where my partner got killed there, my partner pop. Some people uh, were drunk driving, coming down Glenwood, and they hit pop, man, and kept on going. And he died right there by the bench, man, right there by the bus stop. The old pop died there. And the same thing happened to my homegirl, Melissa, man, back in the days, about like, you know, I wanna say 1996. 1997, same thing happened to Melissa. Um, I was locked up when Melissa got killed, man. But and I missed her funeral and everything. That was so, that was messed up, man. You know what I'm talking about? That was my home girl, man. I had been knowing her for a long time. You know, her and Pop got killed the same way, man, by drunk drivers. And now one of their cases never did get solved. You know what I'm saying? So the people that killed Pop still out running around, probably still drunk driving. And the people that killed Melissa probably still doing the same thing. But yeah, man, we live in East Atlanta, man. Like I say, man, this it. You know what I'm saying? Glenwood Avenue. Little trap spot right there where everybody be sitting at. Well, they used to. I don't know if they still do. You know what I'm saying? You know. There were Fred and Jay them here down it. There were they little neck of the woods right here. Fred J, man, man. Mario. All them boys over there from May, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. You did it, dude. See that house right here? This house don't even look the same. This was one of the trap houses in East Atlanta, man. Um, this one, they, Fat, they used to call Fat something else back then, you know what I'm saying? I don't know if he respect that name, you know, you know what I'm talking about, so I ain't gonna say what name it was. But look at that house now. They done took the whole house down and just rebuilt the whole other house right there. It wasn't even designed like that, you know what I mean? But this the post office, man. This East Atlanta post office, man. And this been over here forever in the day. East Atlanta post office. Now I guess it ain't never going nowhere. That's it. The thing still look the same too. But yeah, we on to the next beat, man. We out of here. Now I'm gonna show y'all something. In 1990, I was nine years old. They were waiting for my brother went to prison. My brother went to prison in 1993, 92, somewhere up in there. He was 14 years old, he went to prison. This the barbershop. This is where we used to work at in 1990. Sweeping the flow. What's up, big bro? Sweeping the floor in the barbershop. You know what I mean? Getting the hair off the floor when they were cutting hair. All this right here, there right there, before they knocked it down, it was a grocery store right there. I forgot the name of the bus, the grocery store, but it was a grocery store right there. Yeah, with Best Buy, matter of fact, show with Best Buy. There was Best Buy over there, where you see all that grass at. All that was Best Buy. There was the barbershop. And it still is the barbershop at Beauty Salon or whatever. Across the street right there, that was East Atlanta Library. That right there used to be a school. I think it was called John B. Gordon, if I can remember. It was called John B. Gordon. Back in the days. Yeah, matter of fact, that was what John B. Gordon. That big building what y'all see right there, that's the new fire station. But right here, where you see all the empty land there right there, across from the new apartment they just built, that used to be the fire station right there. That whole area right there was a fire station. And that right there was something else. I can't remember what it was, but it was something else. 
This dentist office right here, it always have been right here on Metropolitan and Flat Shows. But you see that church down there, Holy Temple? That's where we had my homeboy Daryl Frunerick when he got killed. You know what I'm saying? Everybody from East Atlanta that were basically brought up in East Atlanta, when they passed, they had their funeral in East Atlanta. The Meadows. This is the Meadows funeral home. And the Meadows funeral home play a lot of, they have a lot of history in East Atlanta too, man, because they always have been there. It ain't never went nowhere. It ain't never changed the name. Only thing that changed in there was the people that worked there. Uh, some of them moved to another state and some of them still there because it's family owned. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, that's the funeral home that basically everybody that done passed on in East Atlanta and went to a better place had their funeral right there. Truck had his funeral right there. All right, Peter, my nigga truck. Miss Barbara, her friend were right there. Tory, his friend were right there. Um, that's just the name of a few of the people that from East Atlanta, man, that passed on. You know what I'm saying? And um, that's Old Grove right there. This preschool right here, their preschool all we have been right here too. I had a little incident right here, man. Um, when I was 16 years old, some nigga had tried to rob me or whatever. And I ended up the one having a situation with the police behind on trying to rob me. You know what I'm saying? So this is where I had to run and hide my gun and all this old crazy mess now. We're gonna get to that story right there in a few minutes or whatever. But yeah, this it. Just look at this. And just think, just last year, a year and a half ago, John B. Gordon was still right here. I remember when all my homeboy went to this school, man, and I was going to Slayton Elementary over there in Summer Hill. You know, I was from East Atlanta, but I was going to Slayton Elementary. I went from Burgess Elementary to Slayton Elementary. Don't ask me why and don't ask me how because I don't know. I just know my brother was going there and I went wherever he was going. So everywhere my brother went, I went for some reason. Don't ask me why because I don't know. I guess it's just how it was. You know what I mean? And my brother been gone, man, for like 22 years now. Hopefully he'll be coming home soon. He said he will anyway, but hopefully it will happen this time. But yeah, this is the old John B. Gordon, man. This is what they did to it. We used to play basketball behind this school back in the day, man. For real, for real. Everybody from East Atlanta used to come back here and play basketball, you know, when we were younger. This right here with Daryl Fernandez was here that, man. R.I.P. to my nigga Daryl, man. We miss, bro. You know, it was sad how bro got killed, man. It's just, when, it's just crazy going to see bro walk past my house every day, man. Walking from Trussle Tree all the way to East Atlanta and back from East Atlanta back down to Trussell Tree to the Hillbro dead the next day, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So this is another part of East Atlanta man, another part of the history of East Atlanta man, like a lot of folk don't know about um like that right there. It's a library now. But back in the day, man, it was a laundromat, you know what I'm saying? And like, we used to walk from Eastside Avenue all the way up here, make plays and, you know, come up here and get something to eat. Back then, we had a Rallis. It's chuckling now, but it was a Rallis back then. We used to come eat at Rallis all the time, or we might go over to Crystals, sit at Crystals. You know, now, they got that habit on us over there, but we used to go to Ross all the time and go in there and get our little under fatigue pan. You know what I'm saying? Before we go to the club, before we go and get our U-Haul truck. Yeah, that's something y'all don't know about. We used to ride to the club in U-Haul trucks. You know what I'm saying? We ain't never drive cars to the club because we wasn't number 15 and 16 back then. And then number one, of, one, well, one of our homeboy, he was like 18 at the time. 
and he had license. They were pretty tone and we called my nigga PT. So he the one used to always have to drive and get all the uh, get the U-Haul and drive everybody the cars and stuff like that or whatever. So yeah, this is where a lot of stuff happened up here, man. We used to set up shop right here. Me, my uh, stepbrother Zate, my home by Big D. Sometimes Paul Simon might come up here and work, you know what I'm saying? A lot of the homeboy from the top of East Atlanta that come up here and trout. You know what I'm saying? My nigga Terry stayed down there. Daryl stayed down there. Quito, Dennis had a spot down there. That's the next spot we going to. Well, if you don't know about that spot right there, Quito and, and, and Dennis spot, you ain't from East Atlanta. You know what I'm saying? Because that's where we all hung it, slept it, spit the night it, trapped it. You know what I'm saying? Met girls at, you know, whatever world that we chose to do. That's what we did it. So matter of fact, that's where we finna go right now. Right. Yeah, this shit right here. If you from East Atlanta, bro, then you know about this house. This house right here, this when Quita and Daryl was together back in the 90s, man. Like, everybody from the top of East Atlanta used to come up here in here from everybody from Zedrick. Tickaboo, Twan, I think Moon would have then got locked up back then. Then is um Dara, um man, Lil Run, Pat Man. Man, there was so many of us up in here, man. On to my it used to be like 40 niggas in here, man. On to my that was a three-bedroom house. Imagine 30 to 40 people sleeping in one house, a three-bedroom house. Every night. Because we didn't want to go home. Because we didn't have to go home. Everybody. 18 and under, except for Dennis and Quito, because that's who house it was. You know, this the house where I met my kid, my man, man. You know, we had a party right there. She was, she not from Atlanta, you know what I'm saying? But her mama stayed in apartments behind KLC or whatever. So she had came up to Atlanta for some reason or whatever. And she used to hang with Mune, um, Quito, Pig, Love, Deanne, and um, all them or whatever. So she came to the party and she seen me in the party. I wasn't doing that, but just chilling, you know what I'm saying? And she was asking them about me, asking them who I was, you know what I'm saying? Trying to figure out what I do, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, she left or whatever. And uh, her friends, they came and asked me, they were like, well, my homegirl, she was asking us about you, wanting to know who you were, you know what I'm saying? And I was like, when is she coming back up here? You know, because they told me she had went back home or whatever. And I was like, well, when she come back, man, just let me know, you know what I'm saying? Bring it down to the block, and then we'll chop it up, you know what I'm saying? And that's what they did. So she had finally came back to Atlanta from now and then, Monroe, Georgia, where she was from. And um, we had linked up, man. You know, I was like, I was like 15, probably, I don't even think I was going on 16 yet, but I was 15, I knew for a fact. She was younger than me, you know what I'm saying? But we had linked up, man, and, from, and ever since then, man, from that day, we just been tight, you know what I'm saying? We done went through our ups and downs, had our ins and out, man. We done had, we done had our worst moments, the, 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 the worst times ever, you know what I'm saying? But to this day, man, you wouldn't even, even though we not together, you know what I'm saying? You wouldn't even think that we done had issues because everything that happened in the past, man, you know, she done did her dirt to me. I done did my dirt to her, you know. At the end of the day, man, we still got kids, you know what I'm saying? We still got responsibilities, so. We put all that to the side, man, and, 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 and we hold it down, you know what I'm talking about? But this same spot right here, man, one night me and I were walking. Like I say, man, I was, we probably had been together for like a year at the time, so I was 16 then. And um, we used to always walk from Eastside Avenue to Buddy's because the store down there was closed early, so this was the only store or place to come and get food at. So everybody from Eastside Avenue uh, Blake used to have to walk all over this street because like I said, we didn't have we didn't have no car back then We was all young. We was just living that grown for life. You know what I'm saying doing whatever what we wanted to do You know and so there one particular night man when he some niggas had tried to rob me or whatever And I was scrapped up, you know what I'm saying I had on um, I used to always tote the AB10 on me all the time Everywhere I went I tote the AB10 You know what I'm saying AB10 was on it was probably like this big it had the 30 round clip about that long, you know what I'm saying? And I used to always have it tucked in my pants. 
So that particular night, man, when the nigga pulled up on me, tried to rob me or whatever. Me and her, we were coming from Buddies. And they pulled up right here. And there were four people in the car. And one of them, they had to know me because the one who had to know me, the other the other nigga rolled a wonder down on the passenger side. And he was like, hey man, you you know such, 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 you know where I can get some weed from? Hey man, come and show me where, where I can get some weed from, where all the spots that where they sell weed at, whatever, whatever. And I'm looking at bro, but I'm trying to see who all in the car because the other nigga, he was ducking down, holding his head down, so I knew something was going on, you know what I'm saying? I just couldn't pull the AB-10 out because the AB-10 was too big for me to pull it out. And if I pulled it out, then they would have started shooting, you know what I'm saying? But, you know, um, they jumped out of the car. Yeah, nigga, yeah, nigga, get up, whatever, whatever, you know what I'm saying? And they jumped out of the car and just started shooting. And there was a fence, there was that same wood fence right there behind the house. It was a gate fence at the time. Called, we used to always be, um, be in the backyard anyway, man, doing the stuff in the backyard anyway. So, you know, I, I, know the, I know the ins and outs about the house. And plus, I'm from East Atlanta, so I know everything about East Atlanta, you know what I'm saying? It ain't nothing about East Atlanta that you can't tell me, you know what I'm saying, or that I don't know. You know, even if you wanted to tell me something and try to say I was wrong about something, you couldn't do it. I've been here too long, you know what I mean? So anyway, yeah, they started shooting, man, and the bullets were hitting the tree. And um, I hit the fence, man, and came back around. And by the time I came from the backyard, that's when I finally had the AB-10 out. But by that time, they had to jump back in the car, and they started bagging up the street. And they bagged all with the street. And so by the time I started chasing them, like where them boys at right there, uh, police pulled up, you know what I'm saying? And when the police pulled up, his focus wasn't even on the boys, you know what I'm saying? Because they was in the car backing up. All his focus was on me because I had the AB-10. All he seen was a nigga running with a gun, pointing at another car, you know what I'm saying? He didn't think about, you know, I don't know what was going on, you know what I'm saying? I didn't know all the focus was on me. So they automatically got away and went back to wherever they were going, you know what I'm saying? And I, I got left with the ass hand of the stick because um I had to end up punching the police in the face that day, that night rather um to keep from going to jail. And the situation I was telling y'all about why I had to throw the gun up on the um, on a preschool property man because it was so many police out here man on my they were everywhere like to the point where it was just too much, you know what I'm saying? So I had to end up running up on Florida there by uh ticket boot on spot man and ducked off up there for a little while until I thought everything was cool. And um, that was at the time when I had long hair, my hair was long, you know what I'm saying? So they didn't know if I was a girl, they didn't know if I was a man, you know what I mean? Because my hair was long and my hair was hanging out. And I had a straw hat on, but when I was running, the hat flew off, you know what I'm saying? So my hair was just bouncing up and down. So they didn't know who they were chasing. They didn't know if I was a girl or a man. They just knew they seen somebody with a gun. And so by the time I thought everything was clear, and I started walking, as soon as I paid me and I came across the street and I got in the buddy's parking lot, a Georgia State Patrol um, pulled up in Buddies because they had all these different polices out here like I had to kill somebody, you know what I'm saying? I really didn't do nothing other than trying to defend myself, you know what I'm saying? And so when he pulled up in Buddies and I was coming across, he seen me. And so he jumped on the CB4 and he was like, yeah, we got to suck, you know, whatever, they, you know, they little codes or whatever, whatever. And it really was a do or die situation, you know what I'm saying? It was either me, let that man take me to jail, or me do whatever I need to do to get away from him, man. You know what I'm saying? And that's what I did. That first thing came to my mind. So I hit him in the face. You know what I'm saying? Bust him in the face before he could open the car door. And then I dealt. And when I dealt, I came, I ran straight down. And um, right there, that little apartment, that little green house, we see them cars there right there. Sabrina, I'm staying right there. You know what I'm saying? So they had a car in their yard. I just ran and I hid up under the car for about an hour, man. And until everything was clear. And then when I came back out, um, my homeboy had came and picked me up, man, and took me to the spot and just shut it down for the night, you know what I mean? But that was a crazy night, man, you know. I could have been in all type of situation, man. Or was just somebody trying to roll me just for some nigga hanging, you know what I'm saying? Yep, but that's it, man. We out of here. They found a documentary, still in East Atlanta, on Moreland Avenue. All this stuff what y'all see right now. All this stuff, then none of this used to be right here. See, they put the Dan 411 studio right there. 
the lion's chicken that used to be the fish supreme back in the days. Then they done redid the buffalo china. Put the buffalo china right there. Y'all see the brand new McDonald's? They redid the McDonald's. Then the church right here. This church I always have been like here. They just did a little work on the church. You know what I'm saying? John Silver. Long John Silver been here forever. They ain't never did nothing to that. It's still been the same old Long John Silver. You know, still on Metropolitan. Corner Metropolitan Memorial Avenue. Get old shot over everything one time before we shut it down over their way. Brand new Buffalo China. Band Studio. Church. That's it for this um this right here. We're gonna wrap the thing up, then go down to Oak Road. Alright. Yeah. Live on Oak Road right now. This street right here had a lot of good memories and a lot of bad memories. We're gonna start with the bad memories right now, man. Um this house right here back in 1990, 91, 92. It used to be blue. And my homeboy stayed right here. His name was Curtis. He was one of the first people from East Atlanta that died, they got killed. And he got killed in that house right here. The house was directly across from where he stayed at. And at the time, their house was uh, green, my home. It was um, some white people stayed here and they had weed growing in the basement of the house. And um, it ended up being a sad situation, man. My homeboy got his, neck, got his throat cut, you know what I'm saying? And that house right there, he died in the basement of that house. That was in 1991 or even 1992. But they done redid that whole house, man. That house used to be blue. It didn't have none of this stuff in the front yard, you know what I'm saying? And you can see they done added on. See that right there? I don't know, they done turned into some type of duplex or some type of apartment or something, I don't even know. But there was a lot of bushes right there too. And that house right here, my home by Eric stayed here. Um, you know, after all that right there happened like in the early 19th, in early, like, probably early 2000s or whatever. But all this right here that you see, all these houses is brand new. One none of these here in the 90s. You know? This street was a party street for us when we were little. We used to always come up here and, and come to parties and hang out at truck house before the truck got killed. Um, that's it, man, basically. Take y'all down the truck house right quick. Yeah, this is um truck old house right here, man. Just show y'all the picture of the house truck stayed in when he died. Um, walk, let's walk down the street, man. Um, see what's one of these houses run died in. I want to say this the house right here where Ron stayed at when he died. It was either this one or you don't know what else. But the house was pink back then. Back in the 90s, they had it. It was pink. It was a pink house. So it was this one or it was that one. It was one or the other. But that's where Ron was when he died. That's a wrap for that one. Finna move it on to the next one. See that? Get that shoe. See that right there? What that say? You got that? Alright. Let's do it. See the house right here? This tower of them old house. This was the house right here. But we used to do a lot of crazy mess at 
all the stealing car days. You're supposed to back you up. We used to do all our taking motors out, stripping cars down. You know what I mean? Everything went on behind that house right there in the cook. You know what I'm saying? I ain't really a whole lot to say about this house, but this, this was the history of this house right here. It was just used for that one particular reason. That Tyra and Riri, their mama, their little brother stayed here. You know? It's yellow now, but it was blue back then, back in the 90s or whatever. That's it for that. We're gonna keep it moving. Yeah, we on Matt Ferris. Come on. Right here. This house used to be blue. This is where Willie don't stay at back in the days. There's a whole lot of history on this street right here, man. Matt Ferrison Avenue. You know what I mean? the white man y'all remember the white used to be over here When I used to hustle for cutting grass and stuff like that, I used to cut that little yard right there all the time. When I first when I first learned how to cut grass, I had to learn how to cut grass in that yard right here with that hill. At. Me and Chief Boy, Chief Boy taught me how to cut grass. That's my home by Rick, Eric, all the uncle. You know what I'm saying? But that's it for there right here. We're gonna shut it on down to tomorrow. Get out of here. Black Kane. We on day five of the documentary, the history of East Atlanta. And we're gonna start on East Side Avenue today. And we're gonna start from right here. This house right here, back in the 90s, this is where my home by D Drill stayed at. My home by D Drill and his daddy Pokey stayed there. And when they moved out, my homegirl named Sean moved out. Hug Maurice, clean up, and their brother Kino, and they had a cousin named Tim. But when they moved here, this is the house I caught my second drug charge at right here. Back in 1996. I got caught with two pounds of weed at this house right here. And I walked down this street right here, and I came in the yard right here, and I had weed in the box. The police were hiding in the tree. And I didn't think to look up in the tree because it was unexpected. So I'm walking like this, minding my own business with the weed in my hand. 
If someone is not giving you your, uh, like, sick police, just jump down at the tree. And it was crazy. But this is why I caught my second dope case at, man, right here back in 1996, man. You know what I mean? 96 to 97. I was like 16 to 17 or whatever, whatever. All right, no walk. Get him. This house right here, this is where my homeboy Tank stayed at. A lot of y'all probably don't remember Tank, but Tank had uh, kind of got lost early, in the early 90s. And he moved to East Lake Meadows, and that's why I finally caught, caught up with him at, in the Meadows. After I had to move from East Atlanta. But yeah, this is where Tank stayed at. That's what these rails and Sean and all them, they stayed in that house right there. That's why I caught my second dope case at. For the weed. I'm gonna keep this thing on moving. Alright. This house right here. This one, my homegirl Shante, Glenda, and that grandma, they always stay right here, sing with Luda. My homeboy Chuck moved right here, man. Him and Shante was in a relationship. They had kids together. Chuck was from East Lake Meadows, Shante was from East Atlanta. So that was an old slick connect, you know what I mean? East Lake, East Atlanta. But yeah, this is right here. Shante, Glenda, their grandmama stay right here. All right, we're gonna keep moving on down to the rest of the neighborhood. All right, right here, you see this right here? Monument, the Metropolitan. This street right here, my home by Ishmael stayed right there. Down this street, my home by Michael Dunn stayed down there. You can't see Michael Dunn hopping right here, but Michael Dunn stayed down there. And up there, my home by Pretty Tony, Red, uh, Martini, all of them stayed up there. Kentan stayed up there once upon a time. But on over here, House right here new. It was it was woods right there. Some else was right there, but that house one right there at first. They just put the house right there not too long ago. This house right here. My homegirl sent stayed in that house. She was um she was a police, but she was one of the cool police. You know what I mean? Not one of the haters. You know what I'm talking about? And on down. This room how we did a whole lot of stuff in there. That's where we take all the girls at, do our thing, cut up a lot of dope, sell a lot of dope, all that room house right there. My home but them stayed in this house. My home by Brian and Travis. They wasn't real popular in East Atlanta, but I knew them because I knew everybody from East Atlanta. So I hang I home with everybody. Even the people that didn't run the streets and the folk that did run the street. I hung with everybody. So this was Travis and Brian them stayed at. The house was blue back then, way back in the 90s, it was blue. Like I said, that's the old rooming house right there. It was yellow back then, or something. The house right here always have been here, but we never know who stayed in the house right there, so we never bothered them. But this right, this house right here, that's the, uh, after my recent Keno started living with Sean over there, they moved in with their mama right here. And their house right here was, uh, it was I think it was brown back then. But as you can see, they done tore the whole house down and they putting a whole new house up, as you can see. This right here, this house right here, my mama met her first boyfriend from Eastern London in this house right here. His name was Morland. And Courtney and Brandon stayed there. So that was my half sister, half brother, if you want to call it, whatever you want to call it. Courtney and Brandon. Brandon in prison now. Courtney, she's down Terry Mill now. So this house right here, 
That was my home, but TJ don't stay there back in like 1991, 92. They stayed right there from way back in the 80s to like 91, 92, then they moved somewhere else. The house, they, they redid that whole house too. It was red and white at first. And they had rails on the front court. They was red and white too. This yellow house right here, Mr. Highland old house before Mr. Highland died. I used to work with Mr. Highland when I was about 13, 14 years old. He used to uh, fix washing machines and dryers. And I used to help him deliver them once he fixed them. So that was a way to make me a quick couple dollars. You know what I'm saying? About $20, $30 back then. You know? A little quick come up. You know what I'm saying? Now right here. All this wood, all this. What you see right here? This was a shortcut right here. We used to use this shortcut to run from the police. Run from Eastside Avenue to Blake Avenue. But you see all the trees and everything in the road right here. So I don't know what's going on with that now. But yeah, it was a rooming house right there where we used to sell dope at back in the day. So we used to run from Eastside through here and go to Blake and run up in the rooming house. We used to sell dope at the rooming house back late at night, back in the 90s or whatever. And all this land that you see right here, Junior don't stay right here. I get that they done tore the whole house down, so there ain't no house right here no more. But Junior stayed here. My boy Killer stayed here. I ain't seen him in a good little while. But that house right here, Pop stayed here. Pop moved in that house about 1990. Pop moved here about 1995. And he still stay here right now to this day. The house right here. You see that and told Mr. Highland whole house down that we did, Mr. Holy. Look at all this data. We put up a fence and everything right here. It was a little gate right here. And there was some, there was a driveway back there where we used to put out the lunch, the washing machines and dryers and all that stuff over there. I don't know what back there now because I can't see. Anyway, this my old house. 394 Eastside Avenue. And this is where I got into a whole lot of trouble. At. You see that air conditioning down there? Come up close. It's a basement down there. And that's why I just sell all my powder out that basement wonder down there. And my mama used to be upstairs and I had the whole basement to myself. So she didn't really know what I was doing down there. She just knew I had a whole lot of friends coming by, seeing me. This house right here, Mr. John house. I don't know if Mr. John still stay there or not, but he was old, old neighborhood friendly man. Right here. Miss Mary. Miss Mary still stay here to this day. She used to work at Kirkwood Clinic. A lot of y'all know her from Kirkwood Clinic. Or whatever. This right this house right here. I met the people that first stayed in the house back in like 1990, 1991. It was a girl, her name was Pilot. She stayed there with her mom and dad. Or whatever. But she was kind of one of the first girls, like when I was about 12, or how about old I was then, I used to want to have sex with her. Because she was fine and she was pretty. But then she moved. Then my homeboy done moved out. Corey, Michi, and all them. Brian, um, they stay up the street now. But yeah, Eric, Miss Ann, they whole family stay right here, man. Doing my homeboy. I know a lot of y'all probably don't remember them. Corey, Michi, and Brian, and all them. But that's who stayed there. This house right here, this was just old, another old truck house where we used to have it in the hood back in the days. Everybody who moved in, we got to know them and we sold dope from right there. This house right here, we used to hide our dope behind this house. Stolen cars, you know, we steal cars, hide cars behind here, stuff like that. This house right here, back in the 90s, it was blue. And the people that stayed there, they hated us because it used to be like a hundred of us out here. Man, they was old. They were old fashioned and we were young. And so we were doing our thing, you know what I mean? And they didn't like it. So they used to always call the police. And so that's who had me locked up the first day my son came home from the hospital when he was born. They had me locked up because I was sitting right here in the yard and they called the police and told the police to lie on me and I went to jail. You know what I'm saying? The house right here. Same thing. I forgot who stayed there back then, but we used to use that house to do something with. 
This house right here, you see that Marble Avenue and East Side Avenue? This was the Crowder old house. And the Crowder was, was some of the first people I met when I first moved to East Atlanta. They moved from Joyland and I moved from Scottsdale. And this is where they moved to. And they were like my brothers and my sisters and my cousins and all that because they're how close we were. You see all these houses right here? This was a church right here. Well, none of these houses right here. This was a church. And this whole street right here was our trap. So all we did on this whole street was sell dope. The whole street. And there was a church right here. And there was the neighborhood church where everybody went to. And on that church, the church sat far back. And there was some, like, some little land right here. And there was a brick wall right here. So we just sit right here on the brick wall and sell dope in front of the church. That's just when we were young, so don't judge us. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, but that's what we used to do. Sit right here and sell dope in front of the church. Had a play, pull up, come right here and serve them. And they keep moving. They come from that way, come from that way, whatever way they want to come. You know? This house right here was the store. It was a store right here at first. And we used to use the back of the store to go to the back of the church because it was a cut right there to get to Marlboro Avenue or just to run from the police or do whatever it was we wanted to do. So, all these new houses right here, all this new. None of this wasn't right here back in the 90s. I don't know how long they been here, but all of it new. They're right here with them, but a big old church and a whole lot of land full of rocks. Wasn't no trees or none of that, just straight rocks in the land. Right here, See that, you see how they done did that house? It didn't look nothing like this. This was my home where Brock, Big D, Mike Set, Steve, they grandma up all them stayed here. And we had a basketball goal on that tree right there. And there was a lot of a lot of rocks in the yard right here. We used to play basketball in the yard right here all the time. I used to sit right here every day. 24 hours a day, I used to sit right here. And serve right here. And a stove right here. You see this? This is my home where Derek called him murder case at. The first person that from East Atlanta that went to prison for murder. He killed John and John was working in the store. I used to work in this store when I was young. And this first time I got caught stealing out of the store when I was working right here. When she used to go in the back and turn the lights and stuff, I'll turn on the lawn. I used to go behind the counter and steal change and steal money. Until she caught me one day and fired me and that was it for that. And after that we just started breaking in the store all the time. But anyway, we finna um set that down right here. We're gonna go down to Marble and let y'all check Marble out. All right, this driveway, this is uh, still the crowd of the old house. Well, this new world stay here now, but this driveway I always have been here. Bang used to fix on, with, Bang used to do a whole lot down before he died, man. Rest in peace to Bang, man. Rest in peace to Joe Crowder, rest in peace to Bang. This house right here, this house, it ain't got no lot of history over here. It, it been here for a couple years, but it ain't got that much history. Just like that house right there. It been here for a couple of years, but they ain't got a lot of history. This house right here, 1474 Marble Avenue. This was the first house we moved in. This was my mama's first habitat house right here. And we moved in that house back when the dogs came. I remember that song, nah, 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 nah. Your mama smoked crack rock. That's when that song came out. You remember that song? Anyway, come on.
This was another house I stayed in right here back in Miami. So I stayed in three houses in East Atlanta. I stayed in the house on Eastside Avenue, stayed in the house right here, and I stayed in the house right here. But they done um, knocked it down and redid the whole house because after we moved out, then my partner Young Vito done moved in. And um, when Young Vito done moved in, a couple years after they moved in, somebody came by and shot the house up. And um, they had to tear the whole house down and that's, that's what it is now. This house right here, Mr. Hanson house. Mr. Hanson got a whole lot of history in Eastern London. Come on. Look at him. See what he doing now? That what he was doing back then. He still had that same old El Camino, but it was blue back then. He don't have like five on. You know what I'm saying? I just gave you a shout out, Mr. Hanson. I just gave you a slick shout out. Oh. <laughs> this house right here. This is what Sean and stayed at back in the day. Sean and Tiffany and Miss Mamie. And Granny. All of them stayed in the house right here. This we used to come play Super Mario Brothers and Mario Kart and all that old type of stuff at back in the day when Super Nintendo first came out. This house right here. This is where my brother stayed at before he went to prison. My brother, he was on um, like 14 years old. He went, I think he was 14 years old when he went to prison. Back in um early 90s or whatever. But this where he was standing, there where he was selling dope at and all that old type of stuff. I remember when the, when the police folk came looking for him and they told me, they said, if you don't tell it where your brother, we're gonna come back and lock you up. And I went them about 12 years old. You know what I'm saying? I didn't know what was going on. But yeah, that's what they told me. The house right here, this is where Bell stayed at. Bell and that boy Moon. This is where we sell a lot of dope at right here. And this is the first time I ever had a gun stole from me from old boy from right here, Moon. He had, um, I had him hit a little lick and I came and hit the gun. And he knew why I hit the gun that he came and stole the gun. And on this same street, this is why I shot my home by cousin there right here. On that very same street right here. The first person I ever had to shoot my home by cousin. This house right here, this is where Flip don't stay at. And Flip right now to the day, that's my engineer. So when y'all hear that song, they wonder, and you hear me say, Flip, where to do this boy Charlie Kane? That's where Flip stay at. That garage room that I ever sent in on one day, I had got into it with the police and I ran all the way from Eastside Avenue, ran down here, hit this fence right here, came around the back way, hid and flipped my garage. Police didn't know what was going on. They didn't know what to look to. All they know is I was gone. But then what happened that day when I had to shoot my butt cousin? We were walking down the street right here, me and my little partner you know, and he was out rubbing. And he pulled up right here beside us. Asking us about one of our homeboys trying to play it off or whatever, and they were kind of dull. And I guess he didn't think we was, you know, peeping him out trying to see what he was up on. Anyway, he tried to play it off. He jumped out the car. Let me show you that pole right here. He jumped out the car, and he tried to hide. Behind, he tried to hide behind that pole right there. You see that pole right there? He tried to hide behind that pole. And so when he came out, we were about right there. He just came out and started shooting, just shooting at us. Just shooting at us like he ain't kill, like he ain't kill, he ain't kill. If he shot us, he killed us no name. He just came out shooting. And when he came out shooting, I had a fast reaction. You know what I'm saying? And I hit him. And um, his family, they understood what was going on. His cousin, they were my homeboys. Like right now to the day, we still real cool. We still talk every day or every other day. We done did music together. It wasn't never no hard feelings or no love lost or nothing like that. It was that one of them case well. You know, the world where the world. And what nobody can say. And then they can be said about it. Cause he came over here and tried us, you know what I'm saying? But yeah, there with the world. Go out. Lake Avenue. This house right here. This was a candle lady back in the days. My home by mama had the house. 
cute to sell a can out of this house. My homegirl Nikki stayed right here. This was the church where all this was the street where all the church family stayed at. Everybody who was into the church, everybody who was into God, this where they stayed at right here. Like go from the house right there. My folk them stayed there. They still stay there right now. All right, Peter been Nike man, been Nike guy, killed him in Latonia or whatever. But he stayed up there too. Y'all walk could do it. This street always have been quiet like this too, even back in the 90s. So everything we did, we did on that side of the hood. We ain't never come over here and really do too much over here. But that was my home girl, Barbara, Sandra, Akeisha, Derek. All them stay right here, man. They all grown and the moved on now. But their grandmama and their mama still stay here. And these houses gonna be redone about five times since the 90s. I remember we used to come here and spend the night. Look at TV, watch movies and all that old type of stuff like that. But that's it for right here. I'll take y'all on to the other side right quick. McPherson Avenue. Right here. This was a house, um, some good that I did back in the days when I was young. So old people stayed here. And I used to come here and help them out, make sure they were straight, you know. Make sure a lot of stuff went right with them. My homeboy Dirty Mike stayed on this street, man. My homeboy, he in prison doing time right now for counterfeit money. But this was my other little partner that stayed at my homeboy Jeff. My home by Jeff and his brother Billy, they stayed in the house right here. And um, I don't look this way. Like this, but this is where my home by stayed at, man. My home by Gene. This where him and his mama and his brothers and sisters stayed at. Shout out to that boy Gene. Shout out to that girl, Erica. Shout out to D. You know what I'm saying? What's up, D? This is how they were living in when Chanson died. That was um, my boy's stepdad. But this house right here, this is where my home by Eddie Joe stayed at. And they had the trampoline in the backyard. And we used to come in their house right here and get on the trampoline and, and, and bounce all around and act crazy. And this is where my home by um, Lorenzo them stayed at right here. Lorenzo and Tracy. And my boy Derek. This house right here, this was the house behind my old house. This is where Dempton stayed at. But Dempton still, they still do stay there. But look at that house right here. Right here, Leon. Leon stayed there. His dad and Mr. Willis stayed there. And Curtis. Curtis stayed here. But we finna walk down the back street and I'm gonna show y'all where my home by Chickenhead stayed at. The first house where I ever recorded my first song at back in 1994. All right. This it right here. Shout out to my home by Chickenhead. This is the first house we recorded our first song again back in 1994. And the song was called In the Meadows. This is where I learned how to drive sticks at too. They had a broke down fuss in the yard right here. 
nice to get in that car and just play around with the stick shift. That's how I learned how to drive sticks. But this shit right here, the first house I was ever recorded my first song at back in the 90s. Down here, the last house on the corner, my homegirl Tab stayed down there, her brother stayed down there. All right, Peter, my boy Neek, he dead now. He died a couple years ago. But Neek stayed right there. My homegirl Charles stayed right here. I used, to go to, I used to go to Virgin with Charles, and he had a cousin named Tony that stayed here. They used to call them boy the Rabbit Boys, because they used to ride them rabbits back in the days. But um, that's it for this crew right here. We're going to go on up to the next, to the next part of the hood. All right, we still on uh, Matt Pearson. Rambo stayed at. Right here. My homegirl April. She's staying she stay in California now. She done went down there and got married and got all booed up. But that was she staying now. Right here. My homegirl Sharon stayed right here. Her Uncle Barry and all them. All them stayed right here. Right here we had Peanut. This house right here. Peanut and Mr. Roy. They stayed here before they died. Both of them dead now. But this house right here. This house got a lot of memory. A lot of history. My home by Marvin. Before he died. This is where Marvin used to be at. Rico. Before he died. That was Marvin's son. Both of them dead now. My other home by um, DeAndre. All my other kids, all of them stayed in the house right here. But this the first house I ever DJed at when I was about 11 years old. I DJed a party for them right here, this house right here when I was 11 years old. And back then, I had tapes. That was before I ever DJed at a script club before. It was the first house I ever DJed at. So that house down there was the first house I ever recorded my first song at. And then was the first house I DJed at back in the 90s when I was about 11 years old. I had tapes DJing back then, using tapes and crates and all that old type of stuff back then. But um, that's it for the house right there. Yeah, that's it for the house right here. That's where my homegirl Levita stayed at, and her mama, and they stepped down to Bernard. I ain't seen him in a long time, but the last time I seen Bernard was on um, probably like, well, we was locked up together in Clay County when I caught the trafficking case, and he was locked up for something else too. But this house right here, this is, a, this is the house right here on their porch right here. This is where a lot of the rappers started at right here. Back in the day, my homeboy Eli had their house. They moved from somewhere to East Atlanta, but they got cool there everybody from East Atlanta. And we just started uh, all hanging at their house right here. And that's where a lot of the rapping and everything went down there, right down their front porch. A lot of freestyle, a lot of beat making, a lot of everything. Everything dealing with music. That's what we done in there. But their house right here, their house wasn't right here at first. It was a bus stop and a, a bench right here at first. Now they done put their house right here. But um, that's about it right there for this area right here. And you see the front of the house right here. This is where the store was at, like I said the first time. This is where the store was. And this street right here. This is the first time I ever punched the police in the face right here on this street right here. Right here on East Side Avenue. He tried to lock me up for, uh, he ain't tried to lock me up. But he was talking crazy because I was outside past curfew. That was what he was doing. Because I was on the age. And they used to always try to come talking crazy to us because we was outside late at night. And so one day he pulled up talking crazy. And I was just tired of it. And then it was on. That's all I can say. You know what I mean? But all right. That's it for this. Y'all see Lee over there? That's Raymond, Auntie Lee. 
Say what's up to Lee, y'all.